Children as young as five years old are now one step closer to being eligible for a COVID vaccine. An FDA advisory panel has recommended approval of Pfizer COVID vaccine shots for children as young as 5 to 11 years old. The almost unanimous vote comes after a full day of debate. The full FDA approval is expected to weigh in sometime this week, followed by the CDC next week. Now, if they both give the green light, kids could start getting shots by early November. Medical experts say protecting this age group is a critical step in getting the pandemic under control. The adverse events are always a concern, but they don't seem to be overwhelming um, really at this point. I, I will say that the school closures and the disruption, I think, has been enormous. And I think that we have to weigh that against the benefits that we would we would see for the vaccine. And I think that they, um, I, I definitely think the benefits outweigh that. Um, but obviously, we'll have to follow these kids uh, for some time to see how that happens. I mean, the reality is, I think at one point we thought if we vaccinated enough, enough people, that the vaccine of the virus will go away. It's not going away, and I think we're going to have to find a way to live with it. And I think the vaccines kind of give us a way to do that. And meantime, Jamaica now has a genome sequencing machine that will facilitate testing for new COVID-19 variants. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the acquisition of the equipment is part of government's effort to equip the public health system to manage the COVID pandemic and future emergencies. Now, currently, samples taken in Jamaica are being sent to the Caribbean Public Health Agency in Trinidad and Tobago. But Prime Minister Holness said this would no longer be necessary, and being able to test right here at home in Jamaica will help government determine faster what measures need to be taken. The pandemic has exposed a number of inadequacies and fragilities in our infrastructure. Whether it is our health infrastructure, we will now have capacity to manage the endemic phase of the pandemic because there are always now going to be new strains of SARS-CoV-2 emerging. We don't have to wait six weeks to know if it is here. So our policies and strategies can be informed much better than before. And so we will know what actions that need to be taken much earlier. Now, Prime Minister Holness added that the genome sequencing machine enhances national capacity to test for not only new variants that cause COVID-19, but for other viruses that may emerge in the future. The equipment was purchased by the Culture, Health, Arts, Sports and Education Fund, an agency of the office of the Prime Minister. And turning now to the Turks and Caicos, an idea to turn the TCI Tourist Board into a destination marketing and management organization, well, has now become a reality, and TCI residents are not happy. In fact, it was actually pushback from the public that forced TCI's premier to hold a press briefing to clear some things up. Our DeAndre Hamilton reports. Turks and Caicos residents are not taking kindly to word from the premier that the TCI Tourist Board will be dismantled and changed to a destination management organization. Already, offices in the UK, Canada and the US are being shut down. The pushback on the transition brought the premier to a press conference. The remit of Turks and Caicos Islands Tourist Board uh, is one that is limited because, after all, it is what I call a status organization. That is, it's driven purely in, by the state. It was an idea promoted in the party's manifesto, in its throne speech, and in the budget communication. But the public did not imagine that the introduction of a destination marketing and management organization would replace the board, only support it. The premier said despite record-setting successes in tourism, the remit of the tourist board is not right for tourism's future. Tourism sector or tourism board will take place orderly, meant to be wound down as we stand the two organizations up. But the pitch did not sit well with many, who questioned the absence of the tourism minister at that press conference and the need to change what is indisputably working well for a year-on-year -year buoyant tourism industry. Clarity on the differences the DMMO and the new tourism authority would bring remained ambiguous despite the PR attempt. From the leader of the opposition, Edwin Astwood, a strong word 
to the premier that he never told people he would shut down the board. I am of the belief that many of the voters and others assumed that the words pertaining to the DMMO in the PNP citizens contract meant there would be a restructuring and a rebranding of the existing tourist board. I firmly believe that the tourist board should not be closed down. This is not a job cutting exercise. There's no intention to fire anyone. Premier Mizek still plans to move forward with the establishment of the DMMO and the Tourism Authority by April 2022. And continuing our coverage on the tourism front, just weeks before the hectic holiday travel rush, the U.S. is now getting set to roll out new guidelines that will impact anyone entering the country. John Allen has the latest. This morning, could vaccine mandates be coming for travelers? As the U.S. prepares to reopen its borders to millions of international travelers, the government also putting new travel rules in place for Americans. Starting November 8th, unvaccinated U.S. citizens and long-term residents coming into the country will face stricter rules. They'll have to present a negative COVID test taken one day before re-entering the country. Fully vaccinated Americans will still have a three-day window for COVID-19 testing, but if they can't provide proof of vaccination, they'll have to take a test the day before the flight. So please, everyone, make sure that when you're traveling internationally, you take your proof of vaccination with you. Nearly two years after America closed its borders to visitors from dozens of countries, including European countries, Canada and Mexico, travelers from those countries can now come in, but nearly all will have to be vaccinated. These are the requirements. Proof of vaccination, an FDA or WHO approved vaccine given before leaving their home country, a negative COVID test taken within 72 hours of coming to the U.S. The burden of verifying all this is on the airlines, though some companies have put vaccine mandates in place for their employees, leading to pushback and reversals at places like Southwest. Airlines have left requirements for travelers up to the Biden administration. I think everyone's just more willing to travel now because we're just over being locked down and over being stuck. Now, companies will have to check travelers' vaccination status. It's one more step that could lead to backups heading into an already heavy travel season.